so I'm Mark, co-founder of Tongle. Uh, you know, I could talk a little about Tongle and how companies are um, applying a creative community or utilizing it for innovation and for storytelling, but I could also go go on and on uh, about both Lego and Top Cutter. We have a huge debt of gratitude for both those companies. Um, and just a little anecdote, we, we built our entire application off of Top Cutter. So uh, the CEO, who's a character, uh, Jack Hughes, who we affectionately refer to as the Mr. Miyagi of crowdsourcing, um, <laughs> years ago when we were out in Hollywood trying to, uh, you know, to build a, pr a production company and we're extremely frustrated, um, he'd recommended reading The Wisdom of Crowds and then uh, with a little bit of funding, a very little bit of funding, <laughs> um, said, why, why don't you give a shot? You guys are onto something. Um, this space is ripe for disruption and literally through a series of thousands of contests built our entire application and platform. And um, to everything that you guys were just talking about in the last presentation, it was invaluable to learn those lessons of the push and pull um, between the crowd and experts, um, how to incentivize people, and obviously there were differences within the communities. Um, so, you know, I think with uh, programmers or engineers, they're much more linear in their thinking. So it was a real challenge when we first started um, in terms of how to talk to and how to nurture a creative community, uh, which is, there's a lot of differences there. And then with Lego, uh, early on when we first started, uh, you know, of all the companies we dreamed of working with, Lego was obviously at the top of the list. Um, and in all honesty, I don't think when we first went into the meeting, we've, we thought that we'd be working with you, because uh, I don't know if you guys have Googled, uh, you can basically Google any pop culture event that occurs, and somebody has recreated it uh, using stop motion or Lego animation when Red Bull sent a man from space uh, to, jump, to jump from space. Uh, the next day, somebody had recreated with Legos. That video got more views than the actual man dropping from space. <laughs> Um, but when, so when we first met with Lego, we, we said, listen, there's all this creativity. There's obviously a brand with great affinity. How do we harness that energy? Um, and it was very clear that although, you know, the Internet's the Wild West, all of this creative was happening, uh, there were rules that, nece that weren't necessarily being uh, paid attention to, right, with Lego and talking to kids, with COPA restrictions, with intellectual property. Uh, we, we, they wanted to use a platform or go to an ecosystem in which they can apply and harness all of that creativity, but put in a place where there was clear ownership um, and definitions, rules, and parameters applied. So, Carl, do we have a... Uh... Um, I never received your slides, so you have to use your experience here, Mark. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Well, there, I would promise our videos are, are, are great, if, <laughs> if you can see them. But, um, you know, one, one of the things that we're seeing on our own end is the, the manner in which clients are using uh, video, it started off with the perception that the space was, you know, full of kids with a handy cam, right? And that it was going to be very sort of UGC content. And I think we, we built our company with the firm belief that, you know, first and foremost, to build a meritocracy for talent. Second, with the belief that, you know, there was more talent in the world. Talent is scarce, yes, but there's more talent in the world than both Hollywood and Madison Avenue were accessing. Um, and I think, if anything, in the last two years since we've been running the business, it's been greater than we could have ever believed. I mean, just where people are coming from, what they're capable of, the tools and the technology that they now have um, to tell stories is, it would blow your mind. Um, and now with Lego, I think we've done four or 500 pieces of content. Um, we've populated the entire YouTube channel. And in a lot of cases, it's been challenges that, you know, are hard to sort of conceptualize. So they, they'd asked us at the end of last year, can we create 100 pieces of content with a deadline of eight weeks? And of course, I said yes on the sales side. And then uh, my product team said, what the hell are you doing? But it's, it's sometimes unfathomable what what's people are capable of when you have a community. And to the earlier points mentioned in the last presentation, breaking it down into components. So in an instance like that, we identified you know, 10 different creators to each produce a series of con uh, pieces of content and from a storytelling standpoint, you know, Lego has pointed out that it's always been about the space between, right? So in this world of, you know, where there's a lot of debate about UGC versus professional content, I think most of it lives in between now. That's where most people spend their time. Um, and then just in terms of other examples, which I'll show to you, uh, companies like Allstate or other some mundane products uh, or companies which you would think don't necessarily lend themselves to ripe storytelling 
have come to us to solve problems. And they spend, a t you know, you guys know better than I do, a ton of money on research and development. Um, in a lot of cases, they've, they've wanted to get out of their own four walls, access a creative community, and create um, rich media artifacts or vi visual artifacts to conceptualize ideas. So I think everybody in social media is very good at complaining. Um, it's something, it's a gift that most people have. Uh, but not everybody is great at coming up with solutions. Not everybody is good at iterating off of those solutions. So in a lot of cases, we'll work with companies where there's a common problem that they have. They want to tap into a creative community to not just come up with solutions, but then visual artifacts to talk about those solutions. Well, here we go. Well, we got it on here. Um, we'll see if we can play some of this for you. No? Uh, maybe I need to play that. But it's it, just in terms of, uh, the, uh, we'll show you some examples of it, just in terms of what people are capable of, I think is, is the big takeaway. And then, you know, Google's bet that the language of the internet is going to be video. So what first started off as companies sort of dipping their toes in the space, you know, wanting to understand crowdsourcing, then understanding the next model of crowdsourcing, it's now become a continuous flow of, you know, uh, being able to access a community to have visual artifacts for anything and everything, whether it's the introduction of a mobile app, um, you know, specific windows, marketing windows, uh, 100 pieces of content, or we at last year we had a Super Bowl commercial. Uh, crowdsourcing has really evolved in the last couple, in the last uh, few years. And we just actually launched a, uh, a full-length feature documentary product project. Our whole uh, belief early on was that long-form content can come out of this space as well. So we just launched it with a, uh, a company that's um, pretty big in the documentary space. They're called Spitfire Pictures. And our belief was that, look, good ideas can come from anywhere. Let's harness those ideas, and then let's connect them with filmmakers from all over to bring it to life. I don't know. Is it working? I, uh, I, no, I can't. I can't. Uh, sorry, Mark. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so they came to us for, for a number of different needs, but the, the first one, which I think is not the typical uh, belief or approach, right, within the crowdsourcing or video space, was to identify problems and for people to complain about their car insurance, uh, which the findings were interesting. You know, within their groups and research, a lot of, like I said, the problems were very similar. Um, they, we then built an iterative model for people to come up with solutions. Again, the solutions were somewhat similar. Then for people to iterate and say, all right, well, what would that solution actually look like? Let's put it into practice. And that's where there was a big division in terms of what Allstate's former research and a creative community was coming up with. Um, and then to bring that to life via storyboards and animation, which all happened in a six week period. So I think that's what, uh, there's actually a guy who worked at Allstate Innovation for 18 years who's recently joined our team, because I think he was frustrated for a long time with. Uh, how long and arduous the, the traditional process was, and when he saw how fast uh, a space like this or technology can move, um, he, he was just awestruck. And, and it's all in animation for a product that didn't even exist. And it's changing, yeah. it, it's changing the way they're looking at marketing their product and selling and, and creating additional services, right? That's right, yeah. So, I mean, it, it's, it's got the ability to change an industry that's been selling the exact same product the exact same way no, exactly. You know, one other interesting uh, project we, we just finished off with MasterCard was, you know, they have the whole priceless campaign, which is iconic. They also have, quote unquote, assets. So not only a partnership with, you know, the MLB and the PGA, but with Justin Timberlake. So, you know, traditionally agencies would come and present uh, ideas in the language of 30 second spots. Uh, we ran a program in 24 hours where we got 500 ideas to say, how else can we leverage a partnership like this? And that's, that's where the real power, I think, comes from. And then figuring out how to implement and execute upon that is something, again, we can do in six to eight weeks. I'll move through um, some of our process in the background. I do want to show you just a, a bit of uh, one video just to prove that it is not myself dancing uh, with a handy cam. Right here. So this this came from this is one of the like I said 400 programs we've run for uh, for Lego. This came just so you know uh, about where talent is coming from from an animator in Malaysia.
So just to give you an idea from quality, it's, it's in some cases out of this world. That can traditionally take six to nine months to render CGI animation. That whole program happened in eight weeks. And Mean Lo, he's now formed a, a production company out of Malaysia, is making a living. I think he's close uh, to two or $300,000 now um, in earnings on Tongle. Um, you know, one thing I thought I'd get into, because I know we've talked a lot about the, the theory of crowdsourcing, I heard somebody smartly ask um, to maybe go a little more into the mechanics because there were a lot of questions earlier on the, the management of the community, the retention of talent, um, how do you build it in the first place? Um, you know, there's no perfect answer to that. Obviously, you know, leaning on Top Coder uh, early on to see how they acquired talent within the, the engineering space um, was helpful. But again, in terms of bringing in creative talent, it was a very different challenge. And you know, one of the things we set out to do was to be truly collaborative. So there are still some good parts in the creative process um, that Madison Avenue or Hollywood employ. Um, and we'd always believe that it should be collaborative. So to put the onus upon an individual to do everything um, is not what we think is the best form of crowdsourcing. We've always said the mom from Iowa may have a great idea, but may not have the time, the skill set, or the resources to bring that idea to life. So let's build an ecosystem where she can collaborate with a global community of filmmakers to help bring that idea to life. And you know, it was a theory at first, uh, but our Russian programmer then ran the numbers and proved the algorithm out. And you know, we've done this thousands of times. Literally 99.9% .9 of the time, the best ideas do not come from the best filmmakers. So it's, you know, the, the theory has been proven true by doing this over and over. Um, and this is just one of the programs we did for Lego and talking about the space between. So I think, you know, where storytelling can really be valuable is uh, when you can't necessarily put your finger on exactly what you want to say, um, but you want to find the intangible story. So at the end of last year, we have done a lot of programs with you guys. Uh, it was just to find out this and play into that AFOL, that group of adult fans, um, and for them to share their stories and then for filmmakers to bring it to life. So in a period again of two weeks, we got probably 800 to 1,000 ideas within our technology. We'll call that down. Uh, to a manageable amount depending upon, in, in this case, the deliverables. Uh, it was 10. Um, we'll then, within our process, ask filmmakers not to go create in a, in a vacuum, but to pitch. So they'll provide storyboards, reels, previous work, so they're not doing it on spec. It's, again, the push and pull of crowdsourcing that we think really works well. Um, and to, to your point earlier, when we were talking about LEGO as to why people participate, although there's a monetary component, um, it's Fulfilling and nice when we, you know, we keep close to the community, ask them why they're here. Uh, it's really about the validation, the feedback as much as anything. They want to be in front of the brand. They want to be in front of you guys. So we always remind brands, uh, companies, and organizations, you know, it's fun to play Simon Cal uh, in something. Like, but from the creator standpoint, that is why they are here. It's even more important to them uh, because they've had limited opportunity or access to the brands in the first place. Uh, and this is, I don't know, Mark, if you could help me blow this one up, but this is, this is the finished product here. No. I'll avoid technological difficulties and just move on if that's the case. <laughs> but does that, you know, we can open Three it up for unique oh, there builders. We go. Each given 5,000 Lego pieces and two hours to make whatever they want. Captured with a moving time lapse rig, which was also built using Lego. What does Lego mean to you? My name is Daisy. I'm an animator. My passion is building, whether that's sculpting, molding, casting. I'm going to build my childhood dream home, which is a dinosaur treehouse. Going through Lego makes me remember what it was being a kid. Thinking, what am I going to build today? What am I going to show mom and dad and make them proud? I think it is one of the few toys that you can give a child that can mean anything to them. You could do anything, but you have to do something. I really like how it came out. It was that line, by the way, then was utilized afterwards. You can do anything, but you have to do something by Lego and other campaigns. But you know, again, through the platform, the idea comes from a fan. Uh, that person is not the filmmaker, and we collaborate to, to bring it all together. 
Um, and you know, the feedback we'll always get, there's always a term du jour of native advertising, you know, emotional authenticity, um, this continuous loop in social media for it to be more interactive. And we get feedback constantly with our content that it's, wow, this is so real. And we always say it's not rocket science, it's because it's real people telling the story. <laughs> so in a lot of cases, it's removing the chefs from the kitchen um, to find those real moments. Uh, j just in terms of um, you know, old versus new, I, there were some questions earlier in terms of asking, how do you build a community? And what about the person who doesn't necessarily have time to bring that idea all the way to life? I think the new version of distributed workforce models uh, play to exactly that. So models like Quirky, where you or I may have a good idea for a product, but we're not born engineers. We don't have the time or the skill set to bring it to life. So it's again allowing them to collaborate with a group of engineers to bring it to market. Um, also within models, and I know you guys are doing a lot of it at Lego, where it's in some cases collateralizing the demand. So one of the benefits of social media is you can, you know, there are insights uh, and just based on sheer numbers. So when you have 10,000 people telling you that they like or want something, well, then that can actually inform your distribution, your production, and your marketing, um, which is really, really helpful. Uh, this is actually somebody who was talking about Enc Encyclopedia Britannica before. This is a relevant slide to that point. But uh, this is the Allstate example. This, this is what I, would, I wanted to show you guys. So just in terms of where we think uh, the next phase for creative storytelling and possibilities lie, it's in finding different opportunities. So there's always been friction in the marketing space uh, because it's been cost and time prohibitive um, to create um, and, and be able to react. In other words, you, can, you have to pull out your four commercials or spots per year. They cost X dollars and in a lot of cases in the past, that was the marketing campaign. Now, you have somebody like Justin Timberlake who has this massive amount of affinity. MasterCard's really trying to leverage that and have a continuous everyday conversation. Well, the, using crowdsourcing platforms, it opens up the ability to ask what else, what can we do, and to literally react real time um, and, and produce content, in some cases 48 hours or less, uh, to push out to the marketplace. And that's from, you know, from most of the companies that are leading in the space, where we're seeing the, the, the real uh, dynamic plays in that they're not just thinking about it in old world advertising of, oh, here's our television commercial and now let's sit back. It's leveraging and engaging on a continuous stream 24 hours a day. Is that, uh, is there, are there any questions, by the way? Because I know I've taken up a lot of time with technical <laughs> difficulties, but is that, uh, is, if anybody has any questions, go for it. Sure. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. So we try to make the onboarding process as simple as um, possible. So with us, we have a team of producers. We have a, a team of business development folk. It's, it's really telling us what are, the, what are the problems? What are we trying to solve for? Um, you can lean on us. Uh, there's a lot of expertise just in terms of best practices, uh, comps within this space. Um, and we can break it down to solve for just about any problem on the creative uh, standpoint. So it can be we work with Gillette uh, to, to own search and create 100 pieces of content, or it's I need my next television campaign. And there's, there's comparables to break it down and, and make it really easy. And then, you know, the reason we have a team of producers is to act as the conduit between the client and the community. So we don't say to clients, you know, especially in, in the creative uh, world, it, there's still a little bit of nuance. It's still somewhat labor and capital intensive. So we don't leave our clients to just say, okay, go plug in write the brief and you know, interact with the client directly, will always help and guide you uh, along on the process. Make sense? Yeah. Thanks, yeah. thanks Carl.